All right, what's going on, folks? This isn't going to be a typical dark one video. You know, I, I get a lot of questions and stuff about my kind of Linux credentials and my Linux history. And I've talked about some of it in the past, you know, Wintel modems and the old days of Red Hat, not RHEL, but Red Hat Linux or Mandrake Linux and doing all that stuff and compiling your drivers over a at best 56.6K modem. <laughs> You know, all that stuff. I've talked about that stuff in the past. But my Linux history or credentials is long and varied. I'm by no means your programmer. I'm just an everyday user who happens to be a tech enthusiast. I know my way around a command line. I don't prefer it to be my way I interoperate with a fucking machine. But I know how to use it. So... For as long as I've had that use case of Linux, it's always been a secondary, secondary machine, secondary OS, etc. It wasn't always the thing I used on the primary. And a lot of that boiled down to functionality of what I needed, like personally for me. So when certain things became viable, the barrier and the need for Windows or even Mac became less and less. So for me, as an example, I've always been one to use stuff that works best for me at the lowest cost. I'm, I'm a cheap motherfucker and I'll be the first to admit it. Granted, you know, that hunk of plastics and next to me isn't exactly cheap, but you get the idea. What I'm saying is for me, I look for the most cost effective solutions and for a long time, the only cost-effective solution really was Windows. And there was only really one good video editor that I could ever find on Windows that was at least not the Adobe bullshit. And that was Corel Video Studio. And for a long time, and I mean a long time, for a lot of my videos, that's what I did my video editing. And I would take stabs at editing videos in Linux and Kaden Live and... OpenShot and Cinelira and all these other, you know, video editors that pop up. But around 2012, a lot of that started to change. Those video editors that were available on Linux were, you know, feature creeping over into Windows and Mac and stuff. So things like, as an example, Shotcut, Caden Live. I'm not saying those were there at that time, but they were getting over to that platform and other platforms. So the fact that these were becoming more viable, uh, Kid, Kid Live used to like in like the seven, seven, seven day, 0.77 days would crash constantly. You try to do it, you load a 10 minute video, it would crash. <laughs> like it was bad. Um, the, and I'm not ragging on OpenShot, but like the joke with OpenShot is, is called open and crash. Cause that's what it does. Um, but things got better in 2012 because Valve, because we had halfway decent drivers now for NVIDIA cards. AMD slash ATI actually started giving a shit about working with the Mesa guys when that started becoming a thing. Intel drivers, for the most part, have been fairly good, but Intel's GPU stuff has always been, till recently, kind of garbage for the most part. Uh, general use, fine, but like 3D stuff and editing and it's not ideal. So because of Val's entry into that, Linux became a much more viable alternative. And I found myself spending probably about 80% of the time in Linux, just doing work stuff that I would normally have had to do in Windows. So that was 10 years ago, but I still had Windows. I still had Macs. Uh, in fact, my last Mac challenge that I did for is see if I could survive for 30, 60, 90 days, however long I decided, uh, I went all in. I went, I, um, any content was Mac edited, any, all that stuff, Mac, iPad, MacBook Air, iPhone, went all in, up, down, vertical integration, all the system. And I found that while I can still do stuff in it, I fight the system way too much to make it work for me. And what I've found with Windows, the more and more I use it, is I'm starting to fight the system a whole lot more than I want to use it. So, like, 
when I see Microsoft doing shit like, and this is just a recent example, like I held off on Windows 10 for the longest time. And the only reason I went with Windows 10 was because I built a system that Linux didn't play nice with until I went to a different system um, or system config. But anyway, I'm seeing Microsoft do shit that like makes my skin crawl. I have enough of an issue with companies knowing the amount of uh, shit that they do. Facebook, Google, you know, whatever. Insert company here. Microsoft, by inserting all these services and making their OS a service, is making their product worse. So you're making your service shit. So I'm not viewing the OS switch or anything from a philosophical point of view yet. I'll get into that. But as a, you know, you're injecting ads into the file browser, you're installing friggin' you know, Candy Crush and all this other stupid garbage. Even after I delete the shit, I turn stuff off. You update, you turn it back on. Like there's obnoxious stuff that the system does that despite what the user tells it not to fucking do. And I don't want to reg, reg edit and reg hack stuff to make it try to attempt to do shit that it's supposed to. I'm not going to trust tiny builds of you of proprietary OSs like that because that's just insane to me. Those that do, cool. Do you. I'm just saying for me, not where I want to go. Mac wasn't the alternative because I can't play in that fucking playground because uh, too constricting on the walls for me. So that leaves me with Linux. And I've already had a 20 year track record of it. So, and it became a more viable alternative in 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Finally, in the last probably year and a half, while I spent probably 80, 85% of my time in Linux and, you know, insert distro here, I also still had Windows machines. So finally, after 20 plus years, I can say, I don't have any goddamn Windows machines. And a lot of it, and this is where the philosophical end of it comes in, but it's mostly viewing it from a consumer perspective, is from a consumer perspective, Microsoft made Windows 11 shittier as a product by the can't do offline, in, uh, you know, have to have an online account, a Microsoft account, and can't do offline and all the other stuff without a bunch of stupid hacks and all the other stuff. And people want to talk about Linux being a headache to install. And it's like, dog, I have a system up in 20 minutes and I'm good to go. Like, that's the difference. I'm not fighting with the system anymore to make it do what I need it to. And the more I dealt with Windows, is the more I've realized I was going down that route. And while I spent a lot of time in Linux and did most of my work in Linux and all the other stuff, a full bore like cut off from the prior OSs and stuff was never fully achievable because I wasn't going to throw 10, 15 grand worth of games out the door. However, when Microsoft forces you out the door because of the stupid shit that they keep doing, sometimes it's better to cut your losses. And I was finding that there are more and more games that are in my libraries that don't work on Windows, but they work perfectly damn well on Linux. Ironic. So why am I staying in a system that's, from my user perspective, looking like a broken mess, and people want to complain about Linux being a broken mess? Windows has its own stack of problems, whether or not the Windows fanboys want to admit it. Um, you know, people talk about games not working, etc. Go on to any goddamn forum, any Steam discussion page, and you will see nothing but issues on any fucking game. And it can be hardware related, software related, or a combination of both. The same exact bullshit that you'd get people would whine about on Linux. It's just a different way of doing it. Because people put up with it. But for me, the switch was not done because of purely philosophical reasons 
the system just got too much in my fucking way. And that's really what it boils down to. Any Linux distribution, doesn't matter if it's Ubuntu, doesn't matter if it's a Fedora, it doesn't matter X, Y, or Z. If I don't like something, I can yank it right the fuck out. I don't want Pipewire. I want Pulse Audio. You know, use it as an example. You don't want System D. You want Dev One. Uh, you know, go use Dev One and with you know SysD and all the other stuff. You can do whatever the fuck you want. I just prefer certain pre-compiled packages that are presented to me instead, but I can still change those packages once it's on my system and the contents are exposed. And I'm not fighting with the system as much as I was when I'm on Windows or Mac. So for me, the switch didn't actually happen fully until 2022. And that's someone who's used Linux, done Linux content. One of my first videos on here was in 2008 on Linux. But the switch fully full bore was because Linux is a, just a better product and the offering the community gives me personally for me, Linux is just a better option and a better product than anything. The other OSs are selling for me. And that's why I always talk about the year of the Linux desktop is when did Linux become a viable alternative for you? So for me, Linux has always been a viable alternative since 2012. Linux is my only thing since 2022. And I'm not going to lie, a lot of that is thanks to Valve. So, while people might not care about gaming on certain aspects on Linux, without those companies pushing for better things, and those proprietary services that matter and them in injecting themselves into the ecosystem like valve has we would still be back in those wind tail days and i don't know about you you might be fucking nostalgia for them i'm sure fuck not